When one first reads about or visits Palomar Observatory, it's hard not to be caught up in the scale and grandeur of the Hale Telescope. Building the Hale was the animating vision for the observatory. The Hale is a prominent icon of human ingenuity and aspiration to understand the physical universe we inhabit. But a singular focus on the Hale and its many accomplishments misses a critically important part of the observatory's legacy, namely that of the many sky surveys accomplished at Palomar a discovery arc that continues even today. Palomar astronomers did not invent the idea of sky surveys. Before the observatory was created, many astronomers contributed to our understanding of the sky's demographics, such as astronomical source populations, their spatial distribution, and their evolution over time. At the time, conventional telescopes had relatively narrow fields of view. Some astronomical questions required larger statistical samples of objects to answer, and rare but astrophysically interesting objects are hard to find with limited sky coverage. Palomar astronomers were fortunate in timing. During observatory development, a new kind of telescope was imagined that would have a much larger field and thus greatly enhance sky survey efficiency. This new telescope is called a Schmidt telescope, or camera, after its creator, optician Bernard Schmidt. Pasadena astronomers Walter Botta and Fritz Zwicky were among the first to recognize the transformational potential of the Schmidt design and advocated for the development of an engineering prototype to be sighted at Palomar. The prototype 18-inch Schmidt telescope was completed in 1936 and was a spectacular success as proof of principle of the Schmidt design and its capabilities, going on to make its own important scientific contributions with some of the first transient event galaxy clustering, quasar, and solar system surveys. The 18-inch Schmidt's success motivated the creation of a larger and more capable telescope, the Palomar 48-inch Schmidt, that saw first light in 1948 and was in 1987 rededicated as the Samuel Ocean Telescope. The ocean's capabilities were indeed transformational, enabling a broad spectrum of survey methods for different purposes, and inspiring complementary facilities around the world. The ocean's early defining success was the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey, or POS, sponsored by the National Geographic Society and completed in 1958. POS was among the first comprehensive astronomical imaging surveys, panoramically photographing the full sky accessible from Palomar in two colors and in almost 2,000 individual exposures. POS was also the first image survey to make its imagery widely available to the astronomical community. These aspects made POS broadly impactful, enabling scientific studies covering topics as diverse as solar system demographics, to Milky Way structure, to galaxy clusters, and virtually everything in between. POS was so successful that it was repeated in a second epoch sky survey in the 1990s with improved telescope optics and photographic methods. Between these two general imaging surveys, more specialized surveys focusing on topics such as asteroid populations, nearby stars and stellar luminosities, and supernova searches yielded astrophysical insights that defined our understanding on important topics for decades. The new millennium saw two important changes in ocean telescope survey methods. First, increasingly capable and sensitive electronic detectors replaced photographic emulsions as the medium for survey data. With more sensitive detectors, the ocean could see deeper into the night sky in shorter times, and that enabled important new capabilities to search for relatively faint moving objects in the outer solar system. The 2006 reclassification of Pluto to dwarf planet status is the most widely recognized outcome of the increased detection sensitivity. Second was the addition of robotic telescope control to the ocean, greatly increasing the efficiency and consistency of survey execution. Modern astronomers can sleep comfortably at night and have survey data delivered to them by robotic telescopes in the morning. Palomar remains at the forefront of astronomical survey discovery. In 2018, the Zwicky Transient Facility Project installed the latest in a series of increasingly larger format cameras on the Hoshin Telescope. The ZTF camera focal plane has nearly 600 million individual detectors, or pixels and a single exposure image is nearly 50 square degrees of the sky in optical wavelengths. The Ocean Telescope robotically scans the sky every clear night, looking for transients, 
astronomical sources that appear to change in brightness or position with time. When transient sources are detected, the companion Palomar 60-inch telescope is robotically tasked to measure source colors to perform rough classification and initial assessment. During the first five years of operation, ZTF discovered and classified over 8,000 supernovae, including over 3,000 Type 1a events, hundreds of near-Earth asteroids, and tens of rare transients like tidal disruption events when a star is violently ripped apart by the gravity of a black hole. A second complementary survey project called WINTER began operations in late 2023 and robotically searches the skies for transient sources in near-infrared wavelengths invisible to ZTF. WINTER targets novel transients beyond the reach of optical surveys. Both projects received development and operation support from the U.S. National Science Foundation, and both make data available to the astronomical community and public. Never before has Palomar data been as broadly relevant and accessible.